Hello, this tutorial is going to be about uh, flow control in Python. Uh, the first type of flow control we're going to tackle is the if statement. If statements are incredibly useful because with if statements and functions you have achieved something called uh, Turing completeness and that means that you can compute anything that is mathematically possible to compute which is obviously incredibly important. So let's get on with if statements. Um, I'll just type out an example of one and talk through what I'm doing as I go. If 1 is equal to 1, then uh, do this. Print the string, it is true. Close the string, close the function call. So that's it for the, uh, this is the simplest example of uh, an if statement. It's basically basically got three parts. It's got the if here, which just tells Python that we're about to type an if statement. Uh, then it's got this, which is a condition. Uh, and then it's got this section here, which is the body of the if statement. And uh, this is... Uh, uh, the body is executed uh, if the condition evaluates to true. So um, let's take a look at this condition. Uh, 1 is equal to 1. Uh, sounds like it would evaluate to true because we know that 1 is equal to 1. Uh, we haven't actually seen this uh, this piece of code here um, before. It's two equal signs right after each other and uh, it is the uh, it's the equality operator. It's a boolean operator which uh, returns either true or false. Uh, being the equality operator it tests to see if the two values on either side of it uh, are equal to one another. <coughs> uh, if the values are equal to one another then it returns true and if they're not equal to one another then it returns false. We can see that uh, they are equal to one another here so we'd expect uh, this section to return true. <coughs> uh, and remember that if the condition is true then this section of code is executed. So now we're expecting it is true to be printed to the screen uh, if I execute the script. So I'll press Alt P to execute the script <coughs> and as expected it is true is printed to the screen. <coughs> I'll just go ahead and change this uh, condition here uh, so that it evaluates to false. All we have to do to make that happen is make the two values on either side of the equality operator not equal to one another so obviously uh, one is not equal to two so now this condition will evaluate to false and this section uh, won't execute so um, when I press Alt P to execute the script uh, nothing will be printed to the screen uh, so I'll press Alt P and as expected nothing else nothing new got printed down here uh, the other part of a um, of an if statement that you can have is a section of code which is executed if the condition evaluates to false. Um, at the moment it is evaluating to false so uh, we'll see this section of code executed in a moment. Um, you tell Python that you want uh, to create this section by typing else and then the colon and pressing enter and indent it on the next line uh, you type the body of the else clause. So uh, if the condition evaluates to false, then we're going to print it is false, exclamation mark. Close the string, close the function call. Uh, so uh, we know that this condition is currently going to evaluate to false. <clears throat> so we'd expect uh, this section of code not to be executed and we'd expect this section of code to be executed. So I'll press Alt P and we're expecting it is false to be print printed to the screen. So I'll press that Alt P to execute the script and as expected it is false it is printed to the screen. Perhaps I could be more specific with this it. What I'm referring to here is the uh, condition. So the condition is true in, in, if, in this section and the condition is false. So if the condition is true then print the condition is true uh, and if the condition is false print the condition is false. It's uh, false at the moment and that's why it printed it is false. 
Well, I'll press RP again. If you can see, the condition is false down here. Uh, bear in mind that this is uh, quite a simple example of uh, an if statement. Uh, you can have, uh, well, particularly the uh, condition here is, is, is simpler than usual. Often you'll have function calls here, which um, will evaluate to the return value of the function, and that can be very useful. Um, that's something that you'll see later on when we get into real-world examples. Uh, so it, uh, it's just something to bear in mind for the future. Now the next uh, type of flow control that I'm going to cover is uh, the for loop, or the for statement, for loop. Um, uh, it's used to loop over uh, the values in a list, and uh, it's very useful. Uh, I'll just type one out here. Uh, for uh, you just uh, so to create a, a for statement or a for loop, uh, you just type for, and then you name a new variable. Uh, I'm going to call my variable each item. So we've got for each item in, and then you uh, specify your list. Uh, if you'd already assigned a list to a variable, you could just name th that variable here, but we haven't, so I'm going to create an, a new list, and uh, I'm just going to use our normal list containing the integer 1, floating point value 2.2, and the string value 3. And I'm going to close the list and type the colon and press enter to get to the body of the for, for loop. Uh, now, the body of the for loop is the piece of code which gets executed each time you go through the for loop. Uh, and each time you go through the for loop, uh, the next value from the list uh, is assigned to the variable each item. So the first time we go through the for loop, one will be assigned to the variable each item. The second time we go through the for loop, the value 2.2 .2 will be assigned to the variable each item. And the third time we go through the for loop, the value 3, the string text value 3, will be assigned to the variable each item. So, uh, as usual, uh, we're just going to print uh, uh, that, um, that value, uh, because um, we're just going to print the, um, the variable each item, uh, because each item, this new variable, will be available inside the body of our for loop here. So we're just going to print it by passing it to the print function and then uh, closing the uh, call to the print function. So when the for loop is executed, we're expecting uh, value 1 to be printed the first time through the for loop, 2.2 to be printed the second time through the for loop, and the value 3 to be printed the third time through the for loop. So let's uh, execute the script with alt p to see that. and as expected, 1, then 2.2, then 3 uh, are printed to the Blender console there. So that's it for flow control, uh, for the time being anyway. Um, you know how to construct a an if statement, uh, and how to use a, an else statement, uh, or an else clause, to go with that if statement. So you have the if, to tell Python that you want to make an if statement, then the condition and then you type the code which will be executed if the condition is true and then if you want to you can type else and then the code uh, that you want to be executed if the condition is false uh, then with for loops you type for to tell python that uh, you want to create a for statement or a for loop uh, as they're known uh, then you type the, uh, the name of a new variable um, uh, and then in followed by your list uh, and then uh, on the next line indented the body of your for loop for loop which gets executed uh, each time you go through the for loop and each time you go through the for loop uh, the next value in the list is assigned to the variable that you specify here which will be available inside the body of your for, for loop we'll see plenty of more complex examples of both of these constructs later on, uh, but uh, that's plenty for now, uh, and in the next tutorials we'll be going over classes in Python, uh, we'll be looking at how to create our own classes, as well as how to use uh, Blender's built-in classes, which are really very useful. So, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you soon.